Hi, I am Dr. Felice Gersh, and I want to welcome you to my Instagram Live. Welcome back to all of my followers. I took a little hiatus through the summer, but I am raring to go getting back into the swing of doing my programs. As well, I'd like to welcome all of you newcomers, and like I would like to introduce myself. I am a rare breed. I'm an integrative OBGYN physician. I did a fellowship for two years in integrative medicine at the Fellowship in Integrative Medicine at the University of Arizona School of Medicine. And as well, I am a board certified OBGYN. What does that mean? It means that I have a bigger therapeutic toolbox to utilize to help all of my women patients at every age and stage of life to optimize their health. In addition to all of the conventional approaches, pharmaceuticals and surgeries and so on, I also have a lot of lifestyle tools, all kinds of issues involving nutrition and stress management, sleep, and of course, dealing with the ubiquitous endocrine disruptors and even fitness and exercise. I am an herbalist, so I know how to utilize various natural therapies, I call them green medicine, that can augment and sometimes replace the pharmaceuticals that are so prevalent among the conventional physicians. Now, for those of you who don't know it, I have a niche in addition to all the other women's health issues, a special interest in polycystic ovary syndrome, also known as PCOS, the most common endocrine disorder of reproductive aged women, although even though the symptoms somewhat change, it doesn't disappear at menopause. It just sort of morphs because the ovaries are no longer doing their thing after menopause. But the metabolic issues prevail, unfortunately, and they continue for the duration of life. So this is a huge issue. And this happens to be September PCOS Awareness Month. So I want to begin back my fall you know, season of, of Instagram Lives by talking about some of the key issues and the newest data on PCOS. So many women do not understand what PCOS is, including gynecologists. They think of it as a reproductive problem solely. Well, it turns out, yes, it is the most common cause of irregular cycles and infertility in women, but it is what I call the poster child linking, connecting all of the reproductive functions of a woman with all of the metabolic functions of a woman. So what do I mean by metabolic functions? I'm talking about the creation, distribution, utilization, storage of energy, the spark of life. That's what differentiates a living creature from one that is not living, is the ability to create energy. As we know, we do an EKG and we see the heart rhythm, right? And when it's flat, that is not a good sign. That person has died. And a brain has an EEG. That's the electrical signal of the brain. And when that's flat, that's flatlining. That means that brain is no longer working. So the creation of energy is so critical to health and everything about the viability of a human to reproduce, to have energy to go and get food, to digest the food, to do everything in life requires the creation of energy. Women with PCOS don't make energy optimally. How many people think of PCOS as a condition in which women simply don't make energy well? Well, now you'll know how I see it. It's about the lack of optimization of the creation of energy. Now, why would that happen and why would it manifest as PCOS? Well, in order to first understand that, you need to know about my favorite hormone, estrogen. Well, it turns out that estrogen is not just about the creation of life and the making of menstrual cycles. It's about keeping the female body healthy. 
so it can support the reproductive functions. Now, doesn't that seem logical? Why would nature make a human female that is incredibly fertile, but yet is incredibly unhealthy at the same time, or vice versa, is terribly unfertile, but yet is super healthy? It doesn't make sense. It's one body, and nature made it so that the hormones of reproduction are the hormones of metabolic creation of energy, maintaining all organ functions. The same hormones have functions throughout the body. And estrogen is like the top of the pinnacle, the hormone that actually oversees all of these functions and interconnects with the other hormones. The estrogens, the estrogens of the body come primarily during the reproductive years from the ovary in the form of estradiol. There are receptors for estradiol on every organ system, not just the vagina and the uterus and the, the fallopian tubes, it's on every organ, like the blood vessels, the arteries, in the heart, in the brain, on the skin, in the intestinal tract, in the lungs, every organ, not just the reproductive organs have estrogen receptors. And remember, it should be estrogen in the form of estradiol, which binds appropriately to the different types of estrogen receptors, which I'll talk about more in the future. So what happens in women with PCOS is they don't make estradiol optimally. Now, it's complex, so we're still just learning why this is happening. But it turns out that there's this enzyme in the ovaries called aromatase that converts the precursor to estradiol, which is testosterone, into estradiol. Now, there are other forms that are involved with PCOS, but the dominant form is the one I'm going to talk about now. I'll talk about the other type later, but the dominant kind is where the testosterone that's produced in the ovary, which precedes all estradiol, comes from testosterone. The assembly line where testosterone turns into estradiol is malfunctioning. So the enzyme that converts testosterone into estradiol is not working optimally. And we'll talk about why, but first we're going to talk about like the fundamentals. And we'll talk about the whys in other Instagrams. Now, in this one, I want you to understand there's some very basic takeaways. Testosterone is made in the ovary and it's converted into estradiol. And this is happening through the action of the enzyme aromatase, which is controlled in large measure by a hormone coming from the pituitary called FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. The production of testosterone is stimulated by a different hormone from the pituitary gland called LH, luteinizing hormone. So the ovary makes plenty of testosterone, has no problem making testosterone, but it can't convert it properly into estradiol. So the brain says, where's my estradiol? Make more. So it puts out a signal to the pituitary gland, which then makes more LH, which then causes the ovary to make more testosterone but it can't be converted adequately into estradiol. So you get a backup, a buildup of testosterone and not enough estradiol. So what does that do in terms of, remember, energy? Well, it turns out that estrogen is critically important to every aspect of energy production in the female body. How the mitochondria, the energy producing factories of the cell work, they are the little organelles within the cell that do what? They burn energy. They create energy. They burn glucose and fat. So women with PCOS are not as adept at utilizing fat and glucose to create energy, but they are very good, it's a different mechanism, at storing it. So women with PCOS are very good at creating and storing fat, but they're not very good at burning fat. Hence, the majority of women with PCOS are overweight and obese and have tremendous difficulty losing weight. 
And even thin, or what we call lean PCOS, which makes up about 20% of women with PCOS, their normal weight. But if you check their body compositions, they have an excess of belly fat, visceral fat, because they too have problems with creating energy. So women with PCOS tend to be great at making fat, not so good at creating energy by burning fat. Estrogen in the form of estradiol is also key to glucose regulation. That means the transport of glucose across cell membranes into the cell so it can access and utilize the glucose as an energy source. This is through what are called the glute transporters. Now the glute transporters require estrogen to work properly and in absence of estradiol, they're going to not work as well and you get a buildup of glucose in the blood which causes the pancreas to produce more insulin to try to push that glucose into the cells but now you have higher levels of insulin and guess what insulin does among its other life important functions it creates the impetus to make and store fat so now this is a double whammy. You have high levels of insulin. You have insulin resistance, tendency towards prediabetes and diabetes because the glucose transportation system from the blood into the cells is malfunctioning because you don't have enough estradiol. You don't have enough estradiol. You cannot function properly in terms of burning the, the glucose and burning the fat. And you have metabolic disarray. Now it gets even more complex, but I'm going to ask you to come back and listen down the road because I am going to one by one point out through all of my Instagram lives what on earth is going on in women with PCOS and why taking oral contraceptives is not the solution, but actually can make things worse and kick the can down the road. Even when you suppress some of the symptoms, you're actually aggravating some of the metabolic issues, the challenges that women with PCOS are facing. So in summary, PCOS, the most common endocrine disorder of women, the most common cause of infertility, it's involved with serious metabolic dysfunctions as well as reproductive dysfunctions. And guess what? It's about metabolism. It's about the creation, distribution, storage, and utilization of energy. Women with PCOS are not good at metabolism. They are not good at creating energy because they don't make estradiol well enough and in enough quantities to drive the processes of metabolism that are essential for global health in the body and reproductive success. More to come. Please continue to join me. Please tell your friends the summer is over. I am back and I am going to educate you about the important things that you as a woman need to know. Even if you don't have PCOS, you want to understand how the female body works, what hormones do in the body, and I'm sure you have friends with PCOS in any case. So I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Please stay tuned. Please tell your friends, and I'm here for you. Remember, I actually have a brick and mortar practice in Irvine, California the Integrative Medical Group of Irvine, Irvine, where I see patients every day, Monday through Friday. That is my job. I also do some telemedicine. So please, if I can help you in person or telemedicine, I'm here for you. But in any case, stay tuned, tune in, and be a follower of my Instagram Live and my YouTube. Thank you. Take care. Bye.